Sigma notation. This is something that you have actually, I'm 90% sure that 90% of you have encountered. However, might have been a little bit of a while ago, you would have met it potentially in series and sequences last term and also within the advanced course in statistics, in discrete random variables. But that was a little bit of time ago, so I'm going to try and refresh your memory. We're in mathematical induction, as you recall. Today and Friday will be our last lessons within this. And then, delight of delights, 3D vector land is where we're headed. So that's just a bit of a, um, a teaser. But we can prove induction results like the ones you can see over there. In fact, these are going to be the bulk of our lesson today. And sigma notation gives us a really nice, succinct way to articulate what these results are. So let's see if we can remember what's going on here. This Greek letter sigma, this is capital sigma, by the way, the lowercase sigma, which you might uh, remember from your calculator, looks like that. The capital sigma, um, it's an S for sum. We're adding things up, right? So this is just like the induction you did in extension one. We frequently handled, uh, you know, series of terms, and then we would say, well, if it's true for k, prove it for k plus one. So what does this mean? Let's just make sure we got a handle on this, right? We're adding up things of this form, 1 over 2n plus 1, 2n minus 1, such that n takes on these particular values. You start at this bottom one here. In fact, I might even label this just so you've got some helpful reminders. You start at this bottom value. There's your start value, as it were. When you see this uh, sigma, that's a signal to you that just like in discrete random variables, we're dealing with whole numbers here. You start down the bottom. In this case, lowercase n equals 1. And then you end up here. This is your end value. Okay. So for instance, I could specify capital N equals 5, in which case I would evaluate this expression here for 1, and then I'd add it to this expression for 2, and then 3, and then 4, and then I would terminate on 5, or whatever I happen to have. So let's just make sure we understand this and write out a few terms, right? What will be the very first one? 1 over, and then I'm going to pop in the appropriate values here. What's the beginning value for lowercase n? It's 1. So if lowercase n equals 1, then this first set of brackets will equal 2 plus 1, which is 3. And then this one here will be 2 minus 1, which is 1. Cool. So I've got, there's my lowercase n equals 1, and then I add to lowercase n equals 2. Right? By the way, if you're wondering why I chose a lowercase n and a capital N, I didn't. This is the example out the syllabus, and I'm like, why give me two n's? Anyway, it's not that unusual, but I would have chosen other letters if it wasn't my, my pick. The next one over, lowercase n equals 2. It's still going to be 1 over, but what will my denominator have this time? When I put in lowercase n equals 2, I get 5 times... 3. Now, of course you know that 5 times 3 equals 15, but the whole point here, the reason we're writing these terms out, is so we can establish a pattern. In fact, as we get this uh, third and last one to set up my, um, to establish my pattern, maybe you don't even know, need to go back to this thing. You can see what's happening to each of these two terms in the denominator. Each of these independent terms is, think back to your series and sequences language from last year, right? If you think about this as lowercase n goes 1, 2, 3, 4, what kind of sequence of terms are you getting here? It's an arithmetic sequence, right? In fact, they're both arithmetic sequences. Uh, so I'm going to get 3 and then 5 and then 7, 1 and then 3 and then 5. You with me? Got the pattern. Now, of course, this particular sigma notation, I'm not ending it. Uh, this is n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. I'm ending it n equals capital M. So I should say plus dot, dot, dot. And then I am going to write my very last one. Okay? This one actually takes the least effort of all because instead of lowercase n's, I'm just going to substitute in capital N's. Is that okay? So let's go ahead and write that. Capital N, capital N again. Fantastic. So this is me trying to review for you what does sigma notation mean. You're adding up this series of terms that all have this format. It's actually a little bit like function notation in that way. Like this is our f of n if you like, and we're just putting in the right values. I'm just going to pause there for a moment. Now that you have this reminder of what segmentation is, we're going to prove this by induction. The first two steps of your induction are pretty straightforward. You're going to need to test the base case, 
which in this case is, it's the base case, it's going to be 1, right? Go ahead and test it, make sure it works. We're going to assume that this thing, this statement is actually true for some arbitrary value, n equals k. Then the real work will begin when we try and prove the k plus 1 step, okay? So can I hit pause there, see if you can make a start? The test and the assume should be able to do without too much challenge. Go ahead and do the k plus 1 step and then we'll come back together. I assume many of you are making some headway through the k plus 1 step. You may have even got to the end of it already. Well done. Uh, this was not too arduous an example to begin with, but just in case uh, you're not on the same page, have a look at the screen. Here's my test and my assume step. Now just be watchful. Um, you can see here the particular variable, the thing that's changing and incrementing is actually the capital N. That's a bit sneaky, isn't it? Usually it's the lowercase n, but you can see that's what I'm changing in the first instance and that's what I'm substituting for the n equals k, which I have. Let me just scroll a little bit. There's my assumption that I'm going to use. Okay. Now I began just to remind you what sigma notation was by doing, what should we call this? unrolling sigma notation, like fully expanding it out, getting all the terms there. Um, but you can see this is quite an arduous and long way to do this, right? It's rather inefficient to write everything out. That's the whole point of having this very compact, succinct way of saying things, okay? So for my proof of this statement being true for the k plus one case, I'm gonna do my best to try and not unroll it, save myself some time, but still employ the same logic. So having a look, at this. Usually, usually we remember in a proof by induction we can choose. Is the left hand side easier to work with or the right hand side? Or if it was an inequality, do we do some left hand side take away right hand side business? When you have a look at this, this is the uh, k plus one statement which I want to prove. Which side looks like it's easier to work with? Another way to say that. Which side looks easier to be able to use the inductive hypothesis, the assumption? Any takers? I, I reckon the left-hand side, right? This right-hand side, it looks like it's the end point after having done a whole bunch of simplification, okay? So rather than take a simple thing and complicate it, which sometimes you have to do, you've got no choice, let's start with this thing, and then we can use our assumption fairly easily, okay? So here comes the proof. Let's consider the left-hand side. Now, I'm just gonna take as given that this is what it is, right? Now because we're going from n equals one up to k plus one, you can imagine if I did this, right? If I did this up here, I would start from one and then two and then three, I'd get to k and then I'd go one more, yeah? That'd be the, the k plus one bit, right? So as a result, what I can do is take all of the first k terms and I can just write that in sigma notation. That's what my assumption is, do you agree? So let's write the first k terms, it's gonna be, Sigma notation from 1 to k of this particular fraction that I've got here, 1 over. Okay, now th there's the first k terms, but the left hand side of my thing that I'm trying to prove, it doesn't just have k terms, it has this extra one, right? So I'm going to have to write the k plus 1th term along the end. I'm going to have to say plus whatever this looks like when I substitute in k plus one. So, easy part is the numerator, nothing much going on there. What's the denominator gonna look like? When I put k plus one in this first set of brackets, what's it simplified to? 2k plus three, fantastic. So chuck that in brackets here. And then what about the second set of brackets? 2k plus one. Because it's 2k plus two minus one. With me? Okay. Now because I have this assumption over here uh, from my earlier step, this one here, right? I can just substitute this for my assumption, which I think is, what is it? K on to K plus one. And of course, we want to say that we're doing that, that we're actually invoking the assumption, right? So what's our normal phrase for doing that? What do we say? From the inductive hypothesis, by assumption, any of those are fine, yeah? I'll just write this because it's the shortest. Now, I'm so confident at this point that you'll be okay that I'm not even going to complete the proof because this, what we've just turned this nightmarish kind of question into, this is like eighth grade algebra for you guys. I reckon you can manage this, right? What are you going to do? Like, don't write it. Just talk me through it. What's the next step from here? Common denominator. Common denominator. I've already got half of a common denominator over here. 2k plus 1 is done. So, in fact, all I need to do is say... 2k plus, 3. 2K plus 3. If it's on the top, uh, sorry, if it's on the bottom, 
better be on the top as well. This is going to add to here because you've got this common denominator already. Okay. Now have a look at where we're headed. Whoops. Here's where we're headed. How am I going to get there? Yeah, there's going to be cancelling happening, right? When you, this is going to give you 2k squared plus 3k plus 1. And you can factorize that. It's just a standard quadratic in k, and the right things will cancel and you'll be done. Does that make sense?